Welcome back to TMZ Sports. I am your host, Mojo Mukati, <laughs> and today I am extra hyped because I am joined by the former tag champion, the former nine-time, nine-time, 24-7 champion, <laughs> a woman who debuted for the WWE in 2010. Tamina Snuka joins <laughs> us on the show today. Tamina, how are we doing? Oh my gosh, what's up, bro? How are you? <laughs> I am fantastic. Uh, saying this, I just realized for the past decade, I don't know if I've ever called you Tamina. I've always <laughs> called you Mama Bear. Because I know. <laughs> you've been around for years. You've been leading the women's division. You've been a locker room leader. Uh, you've been somebody that's been so instrumental in bringing up uh, the young ladies as they debut on the main roster. <laughs> How's it feel? How's everything going with, with oh the Oh, my e? God. What's up? Well, bro, first of all, I'm like so happy to see you. It's been a minute, I feel like. But yeah, like I had to just say, though, like I remember the first time I met you, um, bro. Do you remember where this is at? This is at, at NXT and you were getting you were in like the uh, trainer's room. Remember, but I was injured at the time and this was the first time I met you. But like I didn't even know, like, you know, because everybody's just kind of meeting new people. I didn't know I'd been out for a minute. And I look over and you're just like loud. You're like happy. So like, you're like saying hi to me. Like, hey, what's up? But what got me, bro, was your pants. You were wearing the Zoop with the Zuba pants, right? <laughs> so I was like, bro, it wasn't even about your whole, like, everything about you to me. I was like, nah, man, that's why I like that kid right there. <laughs> <laughs> because you're wearing the Zuba pants. And I was like, this boy, like, that was it, though. Remember? Because, like, that was me growing up, freaking in the 70s, the 80s, and 90s. You know what I mean? Like, that was... That was the shoot. That was it. That was it. <laughs> That's I'm what caught me. Bro. I was like, man, I'm a bond with this one. <laughs> I'm happy to report that I own over 1,000 pairs of, of Zubas. I'm a collector. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I want to ask you about that. I mean, yeah. growing up in the business, this has always yeah. been second nature to you. I mean, how did it feel when you finally got to be a part of the WWE, even now, years oh, yeah. into your cre career? How yeah. did having that base and foundation as a very young kid uh, kind of change the course of your career? Yeah, bro, you know, it's different. It definitely is different growing up in it. Um, I mean, of course, you then you start to be a fan and you start to feel that love, like what everybody else is feeling. And then you're seeing your dad on TV, you're seeing all your uncles, you're seeing all the family, you know? And it's kind of like, man, this is great. Then you start to build your own, like, oh man, I actually like this guy, and I love Ultimate Warrior, and I like the way he's running, and you know, then you start to have, like, all these different, you know, you're a true fan of everybody, you know, you find a love in that way as a fan. Then you fast forward to when I actually got to come and say, actually, I think I'm supposed to go and wrestle. Man, bro, it's so different because you have, you, you start to have a totally different respect for what, our forefathers did before us you know it's like this is a totally different a totally different journey now you know like now getting to it's a it's a different respect you you go through everything that they went through but now it's a different time it's a different era you're 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 with different people you know man it's changed a lot it's a lot of breaking barriers and trying to make things better for the future ones that come before you which is what i think they try to do for all of us coming in you know like they were the, the, man like what my dad and everybody did back in the day like they everybody was just they were breaking barriers they were doing things that were different you know and then you fast forward to now and it's like man we have such great talent coming in and there, there's just been so many throughout the years you know really like you build bonds and you build relationships like I'm saying with you and I like you build these bonds you learn from different people you learn life lessons you learn like this is your family away from family and now I got it and now I understood damn there was so much more into it than I could have even imagined and I'm so grateful that I am still here currently being able to see all that and yeah being able to see all these new girls and be, yeah I'm grateful for that, bro. I don't know. A lot of people may look at it a different way, but I could be doing something way different right now, doing something I completely hate, you know? No, I love what I do, and I'm happy to still be here doing that. Totally different. 
when you talk about the, the forefathers and, and your family heritage coming in and just the impact it's made on this business, I don't know if there's anybody out there that would argue that that your family, your bloodline has made the biggest impact on professional wrestling of of any family out there. So that leads me right to my next question. Uh, the bloodline, a part of WWE yeah. right now, one of the most dominant factions of all time, the talk of the town, absolutely yeah. crushing the game right now. I've seen a lot of things online. You've, yeah. you've heard a lot of kind of guesses and hypotheses about where that's going <laughs> to yeah. go. We got to know, have you ever had any pressure to, to join the bloodline? You ever, you ever think about that? Considering it's it's your own family right there. <laughs> well, like I say, bro, I feel like everybody wants to be part of the bloodline. So yeah, I'd be stupid. I was like, no, I don't want to be blood. Yeah, I want to be part of the bloodline. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah, of course everybody says, but but again, you don't ever know. You know how it is. WWE will hit you with a surprise from the side of the face. You don't even know where that's coming from. Again, like I'm proud of that bloodline, you know, and then you go into everything like solo, like he's come, man, this boy is doing his own thing. And he is like, they are all thriving, bro, in that way, because like I said, they are finding each of, of who they are, you know, each person is, is thriving in that way, you know, they each have something to prove. That's what's funny about it, you know, and yeah, with this bloodline. I mean, you had Sami Zayn come in. That's a whole nother thing. You know what I'm saying? Like you got Sami who's in there. So you got like a whole thing. It's a family bond, but man, it's like you, the battles, you know, the battles, it's that, that's the, what, what's going to come next? You know, what, what's going to come next with this bloodline? You never know because they're going to hit you with something new every time. You just never know. Well, talking Oof. about the bloodline, but just taking it back a few years, not too many yeah. years. <laughs> Look, we got the WWE rival show on A&E yep. Sunday, March 5th, the premiere of the episode of John Cena and The Rock. Obviously, The Rock being someone that you're extremely close to. Yeah. Wanted to ask you about that relationship, having been that you've shared a locker room with these people for many years and given how close you are with, with Dwayne himself. Uh, tell us about what we can expect from that show and tell us about your relationship with Dwayne as well. Well, no, I mean, it's it's that, you know, the rivalry show with Rock and Cena. I mean, if you remember some of that, because you were there with a lot with some of it too, right, brother? And it's like, man, between those two, again, like I was just saying this, that man, the charisma and and the magic that those two made going back and forth, the promos, just the, just the, you could feel the fire from both of them. You know what I'm saying, brother? Like, this is what was so awesome about them. This is what was, what was great about their fire towards each other, because it was like I was saying, there's a little piece of each of them that that might be a lot of that realness of coming out of like, no brother, let me show you something about what I'm about, you know? And that's, that's what I felt like both of them were doing. It's like, they're both proving like, no, I'm going to prove you something. You know, it's kind of like that, bro. Like it was the magic that made them, this is why you got to just watch it. It's that, it's that fight. It's that battle. It's that nobody's going to be holding down. You know, it's, it's all coming out, you know, I'm going to show you. And that's what was great about what Cena did. You know, remember how like he is, he, he's, I mean, he, he, when he says he's going to do something, he's going to do it. You know, it. he's like the first one there. He's, he's in the back saying and doing what he said he's going to do. He's going to be there watching everybody's match. He's going to be sitting there doing what he says he needs to be doing. That's Cena. You know, he's always waiting for that next person to come in and challenge him and make sure that they can be just as good as him. You know what I'm saying? That's why it was so great with rock and him. Dwayne's the same freaking way. Rock does the same freaking thing. He's not going to back down. You know, he's going to come back and he's going to bring it 10 times. You bring the fire, he'll bring it with, fucking, he'll bring the volcano. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, bro, that's not how it works. You know, like you're going to come with it. You're going to come against the family. You're going to get pissed off and pissed off. So. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we're talking about two of the biggest names yeah. in pro wrestling history, maybe the two best mic workers in the yeah. game. And we're talking about two guys who went on to, to acting and absolutely dominated that industry as well. Two of yep. the biggest stars on the planet, and not just in a professional wrestling world, uh, just two of the biggest stars walking the face of the earth right yeah. now. 
So an absolute credit to them. And that kind of takes me to my next question, talking about new superstars coming in and how important you've been to to some of these ladies entering the business and being able to coach them up and share your experience with them. Let's talk about Dwayne's daughter, Simone Johnson, known as Ava in (laughs) WWE. How's she doing? Is she she getting her feet wet? Yeah. How much interaction have you you had with her? Man, that girl, that girl is. I have to like say, like I have known her since she was, you know. I mean, when Danny was pregnant with her, that's that's how long I've known Simone. This is how like it was talking to her when she was her mom. <laughs> this is like this is how it is. This girl has been there. She has been at every single bro. I don't even know if you remember this, but her and Antiato will be at front row, you know, behind commentators, everything, you know, this is how it works. Like they're at every single show. This girl has been there through her whole life. Now to see her come and debut. And I was with my Antiato at the time and we were watching here in LA and you know, when we watched her debut, I mean, we just flipped. Now that's something different, brother. When you have your niece, you know, who has been there watching your career through that whole time, you know, and you're seeing this girl grow up to be the woman that she is today. I mean, you can't help but like be so totally proud of her because here comes that mama bear. Right? Like, <laughs> um, you start, uh, because I do, man, like, uh, there's some of my girls are my everything, you know, like Simone, I have got that relationship with her, you know, and I look at her as like, as a daughter to me too, in that way. And she was freaking, it was awesome. It was great. She did amazing. And you cannot be more proud of, of a family member in that way. If you, if you can look at my eyes in this way, like it was more than that, brother. It was more than that. It was just, you just get proud. You just get really, really proud. It's something deep inside that you, you want to hope and wish that, yeah, if this is everything that you wanted child, you just, you just did it. You got it. (laughs) You made it like she did it. She did it on her own. You have to find your own person. You can't just be somebody's daughter. You just can't be that person. You've got to be you. And that's what she is. She's being her. You love to hear it, and you can see how much your family means <laughs> to you. I got to ask, too, now, how did it feel to get Nia Jax back in the Royal <laughs> Rumble? I mean, you guys oh, have done sis. some incredible stuff in your sister. career. We, we're yeah. going to see her back full time. We're going to see you guys tag back up. I mean, I don't know if Bro, I like you guys man. better you don't, together, you, but I don't know if gold. people can handle that if Sis came back and it, me and her tagged up. I don't think people could handle that because that's a whole other thing. Because, you know, we'd be going to, no, we'd be running through it all. (laughs) But, yeah, no, I mean, you know that. This is freaking awesome. We have our time. We've got got the laughs and the giggles and and that, like, it was awesome. It was great having her back, you know, and and everybody, we had a good time. You know, everybody that was in that rumble was supposed to be in that rumble, and it was awesome. Like, every single new girl, every single person that was there, like, that's the kind of love, that's the kind of, that's the kind of spirit you want in a locker room. You know what I'm saying, bro? And that's the kind of, that's what helps make magic. Yeah. That's what helps make magic. So if if Nia Jax came back and you guys tagged up, I think (laughs) the answer to the question I'm about to say is no, but do you think anybody on that roster stands a chance at taking (laughs) you guys out? Because if you ask me, them titles are going on your waist quick. (laughs) Oh man, you never know, bro. But hey, <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm all like, yeah, you never know, bro. But I'm telling you, WWE always comes up with surprises. So I can't, I can't, I can't say too much right now. You just never know. You never know. <laughs> well, you love to hear it again. WWE I do. I was, rival. I was proud of it. I was proud of her coming back. It was good, man. Good old sis. <laughs> Fantastic. And again, WWE Rivals on A&E, the mm. Rock Cena episode premieres Sunday, March 5th. Tamina, thank you so much for joining thank us you, here bro. on TMZ Sports. Great to see you again. Keep kicking more over there, bro. Let's go, <laughs> baby. Let's go, baby. <laughs>